Welcome guys to a very exciting BRZ comparison video. When most people think of the first gen BRZ versus the new 2022 plus BRZ, the main thing on everyone's mind is that difference in horsepower, right? The first gen car is often criticized for just not having enough power. And in fact, if you dyno a first gen against the second gen, there's a 40 to 50 wheel horsepower difference, which is huge. But what happens when you take a first gen BRZ like this 2019 performance pack and strap on a turbo. That's what we're gonna find out today. And the owner, Akash, has modified this car in a very comprehensive way. It's now pushing out 270 wheel horsepower at eight and a half pounds of boost, but it's got all the supporting mods to go with it. I'll put the full mod list in the video description if you're curious, but some of the main things to note, this has the Annex Suspension Group coilovers, the Fast Road Pro, which is a more street and canyon focused coilover. It's got the Performance Pack brakes, obviously, which were an OEM option. And it's got a few subtle aero bits here and there, as well as Wedge Sport TC105 wheels, 17 by nine plus 35 all around, wrapped in Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires. So we're gonna drive this car first, see how it feels with a huge boost in horsepower, about 100 wheel horsepower more than stock, and then hop into my mostly stock 22 BRZ and see how it holds up. First things first, we are going to put this thing into track mode. Let's see how 270 wheel horsepower feels being sent through the rear wheels. <laughs> Well, that's quite a bit faster than stock. <laughs> this is how the car should have come from the factory. At least they should have made a BRZ STI with this level of horsepower. I gotta say, the first thing I love about driving this car is not so much the additional power, but just the driver inputs are so good. This electronic steering rack, not a whole lot of feedback compared to like a hydraulic rack, but still really good for an EPS. And this shifter, so tight and notchy and easy to use and combined with the excellent feel of the performance pack Brembo brakes, this car is just so easy to drive quickly. Amazing front end feel now that this has 245 section width all around Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires. A huge improvement in grip over the stock tires. Let's go! 270 wheel horsepower, baby. That's what I'm talking about. I'll be so curious when I hop back into my car if that level of power still feels adequate. much fun. I love it. I absolutely love it. The turbo kit, the suspension, the wheels and tires, and all the supporting mods have really transformed this first gen BRZ into something of a monster. But monster in the sense that it's so much more capable than a stock car. It's not a scary car to drive. Even with uh, eight and a half pounds of boost and a hundred wheel horsepower over stock, still very approachable and easy to drive. It's forgiving. Gotta love that Subi rumble too. This Gretti exhaust really brings out the sound of that engine despite being muffled by the turbo. Wow, what an amazing car. This is exactly how I imagined a proper BRZ STI to feel if Subaru had ever made one. This level of horsepower is just so well matched to this chassis. And, and that's just a testament to how capable this chassis really is. It can handle this power no problem. 
And I gotta say, even the throttle response with this turbo kit, with eight and a half pounds of boost, very linear, very easy to drive, not a whole lot of lag, and uh, very easy to downshift. The top end of this power band is now just at a totally different level. It still pulls hard to its red line, over 7,000 RPM. loves to attack corners at roughly 2,800 pounds. It's still a very lightweight machine. Also a big, big thumbs up for these Annex coilovers. This Fast Road Pro just feels so well composed on a canyon road. It's exactly what I would want if I were to install coilovers on my car. And in fact, this is exactly what I'll be going with on my car very soon. Not this exact setup with the Fast Road Pro, but I have talked to the owner of Annex, and we've got a set of coilovers coming for my 2022 BRZ, so stay tuned for that. So Kosh has done such a fantastic job tuning this car. Really, he's transformed this old gen BRZ performance pack into a super well-balanced machine with much higher capabilities than a stock BRZ. But how does it compare to a basically stock new gen BRZ with the new 2.4 liter engine? Let's find out. So what's there to say about my 2022 BRZ that I haven't said already in previous videos? Well, not a whole lot, but I still think it's worth revisiting this car, especially back to back right after hopping out of that turbocharged 2019 BRZ. So the only change I've made to my car since the last time you guys have probably seen it on the channel, I've added the AWE Touring Catback Exhaust. Stock suspension, stock engine, all I have on here is the NK 17 by 8 inch wheels with the Champiro 225 section width tires. Most owners who have dyno these cars have gotten around 210 to 215 wheel horsepower, which means it's still 50 to 60 wheel horsepower down on that turbocharged car. So less power and less grip, but how does the car feel attacking the Canyon Road? Let us find out. There goes the uh, turbo BRZ being driven by my buddy, Kevin. Let's follow him and see if we can keep up. less power but still it feels adequate for the chassis it doesn't feel underpowered like a stock first gen does just a joy to drive on a twisty canyon road such as this one so outside of the power difference how does this car compare well the steering feels 80 to 90 percent the same still an electric power steering rack still has good feedback, but ultimately it's not going to be bursting full of road feel. Now, even though I do have upgraded pads and fluid on the stock brakes here, I still very much prefer the performance pack brakes on the old gen car. I cannot wait for Subaru to release a performance pack with the same Brembo brakes on this new gen car. <laughs> Even though this is stock suspension, this is one of my favorite parts of the car. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The balance of compliance and control and daily comfort is just, it's just perfect. My only gripe with the suspension is that it doesn't really allow for any camber adjustment at the front end. Just look at the way that turbo BRZ just pulls away on the straights. It's quite a noticeable difference, but again, this car does not feel underpowered. In my opinion, it has just the right amount of power for the chassis and overall grip level. 
but in all other aspects, these two cars, the first gen and second gen BRZ, feel pretty much the same. I mean, there are some small differences, right? I think the shifter in the second gen car is definitely an improvement. The overall comfort and NVH level is certainly better in the second gen car as it should be. But outside of that, these cars feel basically the same. And that's a very good thing. I'm glad Subaru did not take the BRZ in a totally radically different direction. It still stays true to the ethos of a lightweight, naturally aspirated front engine rear wheel drive car. But now the question is, should you buy a first gen BRZ and modify it or should you just go right ahead and buy a second gen BRZ? Well, I will take the newer car because it still captures the same feel, the same playful balance, but it doesn't require a lot of modification specifically to the engine in order for me to be satisfied with it. If I had a first gen BRZ, there's no doubt I would want to squeeze a little bit more power out of it, at least, you know, 20 wheel horsepower. And it's not exactly cheap or easy to do that. And you do run the risk, at least here in California, of having illegal parts on your car, stressing the engine to the point of potential failure, so on and so forth. So I'm super happy that I got a second gen car. And on top of that, the first gen BRZs in today's used car market is still gonna set you back around 20 grand, if not more. Now, if you want a clean 2019 plus performance pack like that one, you're gonna be spending close to $30,000, which is basically the MSRP of a brand new car. Now on the flip side, the brand new car is very hard to acquire nowadays. Dealer markups and just supply chain issues, it really makes it quite a pain to get a second gen BRZ or GR86. If you like tuning, if you like modifying, the first gen car is still very, very capable and doesn't give up <clears throat> hardly anything to the second gen if you're willing to spend some time and effort in increasing its horsepower. But for me, the second gen car just makes all the sense in the world and I do not regret my decision one bit. Thanks for watching guys. See you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.